2011 marks the 60th year of racing competition at Delaware Speedway. It's a track steeped in history where countless champions have learned their trade. When the lights come up at Delaware Speedway, they shine on racing's brightest stars. The last two occasions, DJ Kennington has been center stage in his hometown track. The Castrol Kid is reluctant to give up the Delaware spotlight. Yet, he'll have to contend with two upcoming talents. Stephen Matthews has proven his wares, while the legendary Shepherd family name lives on through the forte of the next generation. But the main focus rests on Scott Steckley. The Castro points leader is back in his leading man role as he gets prepared for the main act here at Delaware Speedway. You're watching race number three of the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series here on TSN. We're at the half mile of Delaware Speedway, just west of London, Ontario. So curtain gets ready to rise on the Keystone Light 200. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Bradley. Alongside me is Billy Rose Jr. and Todd Lewis is trackside as always. Billy, you've turned a lap or two here at Delaware. What's the key to getting around this famed half mile? Well, Dave, I've had a lot of fun at this racetrack. This was home to me for a lot of years. The real trick, down the backstretch. Turn two, you go uphill, and then you go down. 300 to 500 RPM difference, front stretch to back stretch. But the real key, turn three. Get the entrance right, get the thing to turn off at of turn four, and it's a drag race down the front stretch. And, of course, consistency. We've heard this all season. Wins championships, and two drivers have been on the podium on both of our past events. Scott Steckley has a win and a second-place finish as he leads the Castro points chase, followed by the rejuvenated number eight of Don Thompson, Jr. Also, real good to see the 23 of Jeff Lapsovich in the fourth spot in the points. And yeah, the man on the charge in Keystone like qualifying today, the number seven of Brampton, Ontario's Pete Shepard, the national exhaust, high-tech drilling Dodge, powered around Delaware Speedway, a time of 19.482 seconds. That's an average speed of just over 92 miles an hour. He is your Keystone Light bull sitter. Well, that team's been getting stronger and stronger at each event. The combination of Don Jacobson and the Shepard family really putting Petey in some strong race cars. And we'll send it down for those famous words. Drivers, start your engine! Pete Shepard has his first career NASCAR Canadian Tire Series poll. He's been fast early this season, already a podium finish, but a tough challenger on the outside of row number one. The defending series champion, DJ Kennington. He and Pete Shepard had contact in race number one. They've talked already about it. Kennington desperately needs a good finish. He's the winner in back-to-back -back races at this track and led more laps than anyone. It may come tonight. And we will ride along board with the 82 of Dave Connolly. The Ottawa-based team has had their struggles here in 2011. They've regrouped or tried to rectify some motor issues. There's a look at young Stephen Matthews. He's got lots of laps here in a late model car. Good onboard shot from the 9 of Mark Dilley. He'll roll off in the 14th position here today. As the 2011 Dodge Charger RT pace car begins its first pace laps, let's take a look at today's starting lineup for the Keystone Light 200. On pole is Pete Shepard outside of him. DJ Kennington, as Todd mentioned just a short time ago. Scott Steckley, your points leader, will roll off in third spot. J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 84 to the outside of him. Jason Hathaway, great qualifying effort inside of row three, and there is young Stephen Matthews in the 15. In row number four, Donald Chisholm, all the way from Nova Scotia in the 89 and the 02 of Kerry Mix. Don Thompson Jr., second in points in the eight car, and Ron Beauchamp Jr. in the 60. That's row number five. Taking a look at row number six, Dexter Stacy in the 55. Jeff Lapsovich drives the 23. And back to row number seven, Brad Graham off a of top five in Mosport in race number one, and Mark Dilly in the nine. Row number eight has Dave Connolly in the 82 and Derek White in the 99. And then we'll take a look back to row number nine, Hugo Vanini in the 97, and Jason White in the 21. Row 10 has Kenny Forth driving the five here today and return to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series for the 56 of Doug Brown. He'll start shotgun. It's good to see Doug Brown and Kenny Forth back in race cars. You know, they've been away a little bit. Part-time rides, the five out of DJ's camp, and the 56 is Jim Bray's car. Pretty good deal. Let's take a look at the E3 spark plugs race analysis. It's 200 laps, 100 miles here. It's a half mile. The pit window between 70 and 110 laps. Pretty decent weather, slightly cloudy. It'll be good on the tires. The key to getting around this place, see the sidewalk, Dave? One and two, and three and four, both nicknamed the sidewalk. The outside groove here does not work. It probably will get a little better as the place greases over, but the outside is not the place to be. And you're right, Billy. Traditionally, this has been a bump and run track. Our last two events here, we've averaged over 11 cautions. Let's go down to Todd for 
one more check in. Fellas, a couple of cars to look for at the start of this race. A very fast Donald Chisholm, who we've seen run at Riverside Speedway before. He'll roll off seventh. Good qualifying and a good practice laps in this race as well. Watch for the number nine of Mark Dilley to move forward. They were late to technical inspection and only got one qualifying lap. They start 14th. Reno Montaneri told me they took their time, wanted to make sure they got a spring change right. That's why they were late. Well, it's a tough deal for sure. You got to give your driver a good car because it is 200 laps. And Martilli hoping he has that car here today. He's one of the drivers we'll ride on board with. We'll have nine different shots on board different cars throughout the race, giving you the best angle to watch the Keystone Light 200 from Delaware Speedway. As the field lines up two by two down the back straightaway, we're anticipating the green. Onboard shot from the three of Jason Hathaway, the Vortex brake pads. He'll uh, dodge, he'll roll off in the fifth spot as the Dodge Charger RT pace car pulls to pin lane. Pete Shepard, DJ Kennington, there's Stephanie, a Keystone Light brand ambassador with a green flag and we're underway here in Delaware. DJ Kennington, all kinds of loose. He just blazed the tires of the green. He's lost, lost a couple spots. Now he's stuck up on the outside, and Stackley's not going to give him the easy road yet. J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 84 Chevy dropped to the inside as soon as that hole opened up. He actually started right behind the 17, but now Fitzpatrick is tucked to the inside. Stephen Matthews has gotten in line as well. He didn't get a great start because of the problems for the 17. DJ hanging tough on the outside, and Stackley, being a super clean driver, will not rough him up this early on. And we talked about it off the top, Billy. This is DJ Kennington's home track. He has a ton of miles around this raceway. So is he putting some of that home track knowledge to use early on? You betcha. DJ Kennington started laps of this place when he was 16 years old. And he's a whale of a shoe. He knows every bump and ripple in this racetrack. And you see right there, I've circled it. Happy birthday, Hannah. Jason Hathaway running with a little special message. His daughter turns five today. What a great shot. You see how loose these race cars are off the hop here at Delaware Speedway. You can see him hit the bumps. Hathaway takes a quick look in the mirror. The 15 takes a peek, but closes the door. Stephen Matthews gets back in line. You see the Beyond Digital Imaging Ford Fusion of... It's Kerry Mix in behind Matthews as well as this battle heats up in the front. Now two cars together in two separate packs. The 7 and the 17, the 22 and the 84. They're battling nose to tail. Ron Beauchamp Jr., he, too, is no stranger here to Delaware. He cut his teeth here on Friday nights for a lot of years. That's a battle for ninth spot with the eight car of Don Johnson Jr. And how about the 21 of Jason White coming off his first top 10 finish on a road course at Cirque Free I Car just outside of Mirabelle, Quebec. This is a battle for 15th with the OCR gas bar, number 99, of Derek White. Let's ride on board. We'll watch this. Right tight to the tires coming off the corner. Let it drift up, kind of in the middle of the straightaway. Hard on the gas, lift early, break it in. He does a nice job. And you know what? I got to mention, he's really happy driving that race car. Yeah, the A&W Dodge Challenger very much uh, fitting into what Jason White wanted coming into the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. So he's very, very happy with the way that deal is going down as he chases Dexter Stacy currently here at the Keystone Light 200 at Delaware Speedway. But there is your leader, the National Exhaust, number seven of Pete Shepard. He's already got a win in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. That came at the end of 2010. He's trying to add to that here today. Oh, business is picking up. DJ getting a good run off of turn two, using that big Dodge horsepower, chasing the seven. Now, Todd mentioned off the top that they did talk out their differences. Of course, there was contact made at most court on the oval. Pete Shepard didn't run at ICAR uh, on the road course, but would there be a little bit of bad blood between them? Would DJ remember this? Many, many drivers would, Dave, but DJ Kennington's never been that bad villain guy. Some days I wish he would get a little uglier and put a neat show on for us as commentators and racers, I'll tell you that. But DJ does not play the payback game. Well, right now, he's being very polite in behind the seventh car of Pete Shepard, but here he goes, looking for the lead down the back straightaway. Halfway. Inside, inside, one more coming. Inside, don't fight him. Let the 22 car go, just pull in behind him. Inside, inside, we got a long way to go, buddy. Let's race smart, nice job. Pull in there, let's just ride along. Let them go through all the reckless traffic. Don Reinhardt Jr., the spotter for the 7 of Shepard. That's good information right there. That's good coaching. 
It's early. Let him go. Let him get through traffic. Let him open the door. You go through it. Good coaching. And the 22, Scott Stackley and the Canadian Tire Dodge did exactly that as they worked their way around the 97 of Hugo Benigni. Tucks it to the inside, goes one lap down here early on in the Keystone Light 200 at Delaware Speedway. DJ Kennington is your new leader with 19 laps in the books. The third race of the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series is brought to you by Mopar, authentic performance. Castrol Edge, our best Castrol ever. E3 spark plugs, born to burn. And by OCR Gas Bar, proudly servicing the Mohawk community. The number 17 Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington leads the 22 Canadian Tire Dodge of Scott Stackley as they're working lap 30 and now crossing the line, lap 31 of the Keystone Light 200. DJ's got that car on cruise control right now, hitting his marks. And here you get to see the 84 and the three, they're fighting for four. And the 15 of uh, Stephen Matthews in there as well as they work around lap traffic. Kenny fourth on the inside, Dave Connolly upstairs, so this is gonna make things tough. Well, the 84 going the big side, we're gonna be three wide going down the front stretch, heading for turn one. Oh, the three thinks better, but Matthews tried to trap him in there. And you can't really fault uh, Dave Connolly in the Metro number 82. He was on the outside of fourth working for position. He sees the leaders come by. He's like, I want to give you guys room, but I just can't. Oh, trouble on pit road. The 99 of Derek White is out of the race car. Yeah, he's out. Looks like a blown motor for that Chevy Impala. But uh, tough rank for the 99 team. Well, Dave, they had a great day in practice. Billy Burns and Jason Kotai worked very hard on that race car and got them extremely comfortable. And actually, we'll see Jason's brother, Stephen Cote. He'll be behind the wheel of the 99 at Mosport Raceway in race number four this series. So there is your leader, the 17 of DJ Kennington. Being chased by the 22 of Scott Steckley, but Kennington's now opened up a bit of a gap as you take a look at the Castro leaderboard, the ticker across the top of your screen. You see Pete Shepard still holding down the third place spot. Jason Hathaway running in fifth, chasing the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Seventh right there, that's Mix in the 02 and Chisholm in the 89. And Donald Chisholm, gotta give a shout out to him. He only runs a handful of NASCAR Canadian Tire Series races every year. Of course, he does the uh, race at Andy Ganesh in Nova Scotia. He tends to do Delaware and, of course, Kawartha at the end of the year, but he's doing very well here today in the Keystone Light 200. Well, I'm sure that's just a tune-up here for him. You know, Mike McCall built that car for him so he would get a chance for Mike to give the car a little tweaking, get ready for taking it back out home and hanging it on with other guys when they travel out there. Here comes Matthews to the inside of Hathaway. That's a battle for fifth spot. Clear behind the 15 if you want to let it go. Still there. Still there. Clear up behind. Go. Drop it. Boy, the spotters are earning their money today. That was the spotter on the three car telling him, let him go, it's clear behind him, and he did just that. And Billy, you see that patch of concrete down on the inside of the corners. How difficult is that to transition from the asphalt to the concrete back to the asphalt? Well, the real deal, when we, they first put that concrete sidewalk down, you run with the lefts in the asphalt and the rights up on the sidewalk. If you get the, if you go to go across it, you'll get both tires on it, and the car pushes up. You watch when the car is for up off the corner. The car has to go right to the wall because there's no traction. And this is historically, as we mentioned, a one-groove racetrack. You see the cars pretty much nose to tail as DJ Kennington puts a lap on the 21 of Jason White. As we ride on board with the A&W Cruise of the Dub Special, the 21 of White. Watch DJ Kennington in the turn three. Got the tires right down almost in the grass. That's how you get traction here at Delaware Speedway. A little loose up off the corner, but loose is fast. And you know what? One driver who's picked up his form from his championship winning season back in 2008 is the driver of the 22 of Scott Steckley. You remember back in that season, he won the season opener. He had a number of really strong runs at the start of the year and just hung on to win the championship. This looks very reminiscent of that year. Whoa, contact between the 9 and the 23. That's for 11th spot. As Mark Daly will take the spot that Tim Hortons dodge, the 23 of... Jeff Lapsovich will slide back one position. There's Brad Graham position. There's Brad Graham, the Hobart Plumbing, number 19. He's having a fair 
fairly solid run here once again this afternoon. Well, Brad Graham, another one of those guys that has lots of laps here at Delaware Speedway. The 23 scoots back by the 9, overcook the corner just a little bit, slid up, lost the spot, and he's in danger of losing another one to the 19. Boy, that excite dodge. He went all the way up the hill. He needed every piece of real estate to gather that one back up as it took a trip, but those two hard-earned positions for Mark Dilley have gone by the wayside, and those drivers really have to get on it because the 17 of DJ Kennington is coming. There's a battle for ninth spot. John Thompson Jr. and the Farmers Feed family's number eight will move around the 60 Mopar Dodge of Ron Beauchamp Jr. Oh, a little bit of smoke off of somebody's car going through the corner. I didn't quite catch the number. It looked like a red car battling just ahead of this group. It could have been the 56 of Doug Brown just locking that left front tire. He's uh, currently two laps down to the leaders, just tucking on the inside, getting some laps for Jim Bray, the car owner of that machine. Mark Dilley in danger of going a lap down to the 17 of DJ Kennington. Boy, Kennington is really putting it to this field. He's putting in some very, very quick laps, and the 22 of Scott Steckley is right there as well. Down to the bottom, DJ Kennington going to get underneath the nine. And you see Dilly himself working lap traffic, so he did have to take the outside, the extreme outside, try and find some traction there to stay off the wall here at Delaware Speedway. But he does go a lap down to the top two cars. And now Mark Dilly in the VTEC free pass position, so if a caution does come out, he will get that, that lap back. Things are getting pretty busy. Oh, the 97 spins around. And just as I say it, the 97 of Hugo Benini goes for a loop. And that will put the number nine of Mark Dilley back on the lead lap. So the 97 of Hugo Benini making his second start in 2011, but it is pit stop time. There is your leader, DJ Kennington, down third place, run of the seven of Pete Shepard, and Todd's in Kennington's pit. Todd? DJ Kennington relinquishes the lead for a scheduled stop. They'll make a handling adjustment to the left rear, fill him full of fuel. He'll return later in the race for tires. We'll return to Delaware Speedway in just a moment. It's magic hour here at Delaware Speedway as we get set for the first restart of the night here at the Keystone Light 200. Working lap 70 is at... 2011 Dodge Charger RT pace car ducks to the pits. Scott Steckley, your new leader, with Stephen Matthews to the outside, and we're back green. Up through the gears, down to turn one, one more time. DJ Kennington sit there on the outside. A little bit of push off the corner. It'll be the 22 of Scott Steckley. And as we mentioned before the break, the number nine Leland Dodge of Mark Dilley did get the VTEC free pass. He's currently running at 13th spot as Stephen Matthews tries to hang on to that outside group. Jason Hathaway working on him. Wow, even making a pit stop, DJ Kennedy from back out, he's still sitting in the fourth spot. Now, Billy, making that pit stop 70 laps into the race, what are some of those drivers calling for as far as changes go? Well, as the fuel comes out of the car, the car, you know, the wedge changes, the rear weight changes. So most of the guys took just fuel. So that'll stabilize the car on corner entry. So then next time around, they'll put right side tires on it and hopefully save them for later on the race. Whoa, the 89 with a lot of damage on the left side. Yeah, the Celtic Ford number 89 of Donald Chisholm. He has significant body damage to the driver's side of that Ford Fusion. We'll have another look at it. Down into turn one, the 55 drives down the bottom, the 89 closes the door, the 55 drives right over the left door and fender. Wow, the uh, Donald Chisholm car actually could read Goodyear out his side window, so a scary sight there, but no caution as we stand or green here in the Keystone Light 200. Well, that's the spotter and driver having a conversation. They can see gear oil on the racetrack, but we're still under green. Yeah, we can't see a car that's smoking, so we're not sure who that might be coming from, but you can see some of the cars getting a little bit crossways, a little bit loose up off the corner, so it might be affecting them. Let's now go down pit side. Todd standing by with Donald Chisholm. Boy, Donald, been a tough night for you. You had that fuel can stick. What happened out on the track? Uh, I really have no idea. I think the 55 might have 
overdrove the corner by about 10 lengths or something and uh, drove up over top of me and here we are. Pretty early in the race to be running like that, I thought, but uh, anyway, that's it for tonight, I guess. Thanks. And actually, he was back in the field because of that gas can incident. He left the pan of gas can hanging out, so he had to go back in and make a pit stop again, remove that can, so that's what put him back in the melee. Well, cautions breed cautions for sure. You always got to be careful when you get back in the in the traffic. And there is a dice for seven spot. Pete Shepard Jr. in the seven car is going backwards in the national exhaust dodge. So stuck up on the outside, he seems to be losing a lot of positions. Well, the balance on the car is just not quite what Pete Shepard Jr. would like right now. They put the fuel in the car with no tires, and he slide a little bit. There's the aid of Don Thompson Jr. making his way through in the bottom as well. Boy, it's really not working well at all. He continues to lose positions. The Tim Hortons dodge, the 23 of Jason, or Jeff Lapsovich, I should say, as we run on board with the 21 machine of Jason White. But there seems to be an issue with that 7 car. Todd's in his pit box. Todd, what can you tell us? Guys, this is the pit stall for the number seven car of Pete Shepard. We're looking at a big mark of gear oil on the back. When he made his pit stop, he left that on the track here in his pit stall. The team is worried about it. They've got some gear oil ready if they do have to make a stop. Right now, Pete Shepard's still out on course at speed, but the team with worried looks on their faces. Well, I'm just guessing, but I'll tell you, the reason that seven car is slowing down is because the gear is binding up. When you don't have oil in there, that thing makes a lot of heat even with oil in it. You start to lose oil, the temperature goes up, and it takes a ton of horsepower to turn a gear that's not got no, enough oil in it. And that would be the culprit, of course, the drivers mentioning earlier. So air, clear by motion. And they saw that gear oil on the racetrack. It's obviously coming from the seven car, so no doubt NASCAR now taking a look at that national exhaust number seven and making sure he's not dropping too much fluid on the raceway. Ronnie Beauchamp Jr. just made a textbook pass. Here at Delaware, if you can get the car turned in the middle of one and two and come off on the bottom of the Delaware Hill, you can beat the guy bad down the backstretch. He did a textbook. Oh, contact between Conley and the eight. John Thompson Jr. trying to put a lap around the 82 of Dave Connolly, and they got together, both kept it straight, but no doubt Don Thompson Jr. is going to be a little incensed at that. 22 is Stackley, really working well here tonight. He comes off the fourth corner. We're halfway, folks. And that brings us to the Tim Hortons halfway update. Three leaders, two lead changes, and just one caution period for a total of 11 laps here this afternoon. While we're on board with Pete Shepard, you can hear that gear eating itself up. And Shepard thanking his crew for a good, a good race car here today. Of course, qualifying on the pole. This is not the way he wanted to see his day end, but the seven is going back behind the wall. A rear end. Garen, we've got problems. Hugo Vanini and the 17 of DJ Kennington. So Kennington gets involved in another melee. Hugo Vanini. Just a slide, no real damage to that Ford Fusion, but you saw the rear bumper cover hanging off the Casserole Edge Dodge. So caution flag flies for the second time here at Delaware Speedway. Let's have another look at this. Down into turn one, Matthews going around. Oh, Vanini just locks up the back, slides around. Kenny can had to anchor it down, trying not to hit him and get sideways and tears the bumper cover off. And it did look to miss all the wheels of the 17 Dodge, but some pit stops now for the 15 of Stephen Matthews and the 22 of Scott Steckley is in. That's the Castrol crew cam, Danny to Shepard for the Steckley team. Take a look at him hitting all his lug nuts. Five on and five off, that's how it's done here in NASCAR land. DJ Kennington crew going to work putting some tape on that rear bumper cover. I'm not sure they'll change the tires this time around, but you look for that car to come back to pit road and be strong. Well, we do have a new leader here in the Keystone Light 200. The 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick is at the front. Welcome back to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series here on TSN, working restart number two here at the Keystone Light 200 at Delaware Speedway on lap 111. J.R. Fitzpatrick, your leader, and the 19 of Brad Gray on the outside. Oh, the sound of speed 
one more time up through the gearbox. Everybody racing for the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get down there, down the back stretch. Oh, Matthews gets big loose, gives Graham the spot. Matthews has a moment, he gathers it back up. He doesn't quite give Graham the spot. He wants it back as he tucks his nose in there, but then gets in the line. 88 laps to go. Things are starting to heat up in the front. Well, business is picking up. Some guys got tires that last stop. These guys didn't stop, and they're going at it. The 19 homer, we talked about this. Brad Graham has a lot of laps here in the old cast car division. But look at how quickly after the restart we get into single file. Drivers not willing to hang up on the outside. Now they know how little traction there is out there. Well, we talked about the traction earlier. Then you throw in the grease out of the number seven race car, and things are slicking up. Now, well, speaking of that seven race car, Pete Shepard is out of this one, and Todd's standing by with him. Todd? That's right, guys. A disappointing end to the night for our pole sitter, Pete Shepard. Boy, tough one. What's put you out? Uh, just a seal on the rear end went. Nothing anyone could do. The crew worked so hard, and it's not an error there. As these things happen in racing, uh, this national exhaust dodge was fast all night. Top three car. Got to thank High Tech, Rick Diamond from Diamond Material Handling. Just everybody who's helped us out. You know, our spotter Don Reinhardt. We got him back today. He did a great job. He was ill, so uh, you know, I really hate it for the guys, for the crew, uh, Don. Just everybody. Just want to thank them, and we'll be back. Pete Shepard will be back, guys. There's a lot of cars here in the infield of Delaware. It's a pretty common sight at this racetrack. Delaware very hard on a equipment and we're seeing some of the results in the infield well, that's Dougie Brown in the 56 he's out of the race as well that's pretty disappointing on his re-entry into NASCAR racing hey, you could almost call the infield here at Delaware Speedway the boulevard of broken dreams some night looks like that way this night as the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick continues to lead the field in the Schick Hydro Chevy but a great run being put in by Brad Graham in the Hobart Dodge he had an awesome run at most sports speedway and he's having another great run here tonight. Also give a shout out to the 15 of Stephen Matthews. Rookie this year, run a couple races last year out of New Liskert, Ontario. His dad owns a Ford dealership. And Steve Mifsud, the crew chief on that team, Alex Nagy is gonna take over at Toronto. So interesting changes going on in the 15 team behind the scenes. that horsepower down the back stretch. There's the three of Jason Hathaway starting to show his muscle. Yeah, the Rockstar Dodge is really having another good run. Uh, and, and we've talked about some drivers who are having solid runs here today, quietly solid. And the three car is one of them. He's been inside the top ten all afternoon, all night long. And he's continuing that strong run here in the three. On board with Ron Beauchamp Jr. Ronnie's not having the year that he'd like to have, but that Mopar Dodge is always strong here at Delaware Speedway. And you got to give a call to the 02 Dickies Ford of Kerry Mix. He's in the mix as well, pardon the pun, but look at the gap that J.R. Fitzpatrick is opening up over this gaggle of race cars. Well, he's out there in clean air, even though it's a half-mile racetrack. You still, when you're out in the lead, you don't have to fight with anybody, and you don't have to keep looking in the mirror. That's the 55 of Dexter Stacy as we ride on board the 21 of Jason White. Stacy, after getting into Chisholm, doesn't appear to have suffered any ill effects on the 55 Dodge as he continues to work just outside of the top 10. I don't know, you take a look on that yellow paint job, but we ever get another look at the back of that race car. Seems to be some oil misting up on the back end of the wing of that race car. Yeah, I thought I saw something right sort of in the center of the bumper cover of that race car, so I'll have to keep an eye on it. There's the five being driven tonight by Kenny Ford. That car out of the DJ Kennington shops. So with J.R. Fitzpatrick in full control here in the Keystone Light 200, everybody's got a little catching up to do. TSN and TSN Mobile TV. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway, the Keystone Light 200 as we continue lap 144. J.R. Fitzpatrick is your leader in the Schick Hydro Chevy being chased by the Holmar Plumbing number 19 Dodge of Brad Graham and Fitzpatrick's lead has somewhat evaporated. Well, he was out front there having it all his own way, but Brad Graham is starting to roll in on top of his back bumper. Or is that J.R. Fitzpatrick watching his mirror and knowing Listen, I got this field covered. Maybe I can back off and save my stuff a little bit. Well, he may be coasting a little bit, but you don't want to give up too much to those guys. You don't want to give them a shot at your bumper. 55 laps to go. As you can see, the OCR gas bar ticker across the top of your screen. There's the 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. and the 22 of Scott Steckley battling nose to tail. And it, again, a single file run. Nobody really willing to try their hand up on the outside. Well, not 
not at all. As this racetrack cools down, you'd think it'd get a little faster, but the problem with the sidewalk, it gets a little slicker. So it becomes even more important to get, look at Kerry Mix, the tires right down in the grass, cuts across pit road and across the bump. You gotta go around the bottom here at night, it gets worse. You can see the brakes starting to glow on these cars as well as the 19 of slides up the racetrack a little bit. Of course, we have to remember back to the pit stops quite a while ago now. All these cars at the front of the field didn't take tires, so that's going to start to affect the handling of these race cars. Absolutely. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty on the next caution. They will take right side row. And a little bit further to that, Billy, you got to think with a single-file racetrack, the laps are starting to tick down, and there's not a lot of laps to work your way back up. If you make a stop, you're at the back of the field, and how do you get back to the front? Well, with fresh rubber, you will have a distinct advantage, but still, pretty tough sled. Some of these guys are going to be thinking, boy, we haven't had as many cautions as usual. If it goes the distance, they can make it on fuel. So then it's going to be down to which crew chief has the best setup on worn-out tires. And as the sun starts to set, you can see as well out of the front windshield of Ron Beauchamp Jr., these windshields starting to look a little bit dirtier after the seven car of Pete Shepard put some fluid down on the racetrack, and now we've got some bumping and grinding down the back stretch of the 23, and Jeff Lapsovich goes for a big slide. Wow, there was contact between the 22 and the 60. That opened the door, the 23 tried to get his nose in there, and Steckley hammered the door shut, and around Lapsovich went. And the caution flag is out as Lapsovich finds it. Gary, he'll stay on the lead lap. The leader's not yet coming around. But this will give those top five cars really a chance to come in and get their tires. Let's have a look here. Ronnie Beauchamp gets a little wiggly getting in the corner. The 22 checks up not to hit him. The 23 and the 22 get together. And Lapsovich goes around. Now they definitely touched wheels coming off of turn number two. But your leader, J.R. Fitzpatrick, is down pit lane. And Todd is standing by. Todd? This is the money stop, guys. The 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick along pit road. Two right side tires. That car going up in the air. Smooth stop so far. A little handling adjustment in the right rear as well. All the others that need tires also taking them. We see DJ Kennington getting his right side tires as well. But the new leader is that man, the eight car of Don Johnson Jr. Slash Twitter. Jr. leads for the first time here in the Keystone Light 200 from Delaware Speedway. Welcome back to the 2011 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series here on TSN. We ride on board with the 82 of Dave Connolly. He'll find his spot in 15th as the 55 of Dexter Stacy, the recipient of the VTEC free pass as we go back to green. Up through the gearbox one more time at Delaware Speedway. Down the back stretch of Don Thompson Jr. slays it out over top of the 60 Mopar Dodge. Yeah, I was going to say he took advantage of that inside crew starting spot. Ron Beauchamp Jr. stuck up on the outside. 42 laps to go as you take a look at the Leland Industries ticker on the top of your screen. How about Mark Dilley in the number nine? He was a lap down at one point this afternoon. Well, I'll tell you, the 17 Castro Dodge, that pit crew did an awesome job. They beat the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick off of pit road, putting on them right sides. And we're riding on board with the X-side, number nine of Dilly, as he works the back bumper of the 60 of Beauchamp, who is all kinds of loose. Ronnie Beauchamp Jr. working that right rear over pretty hard, coming up off the corner. And Billy, we saw these drivers just come in, take right side tires for the stretch run of this race. How much are they able to match the setups of the cars that were under there, or are they putting them back to the starting point of what they started with at the beginning of today's race? Well, Dave, what you got to remember is the left side's been on there since the start, so they've grown X number of pounds, whatever that may be, three, five, six, seven, or eight, whatever it is. The right sides will grow double that easily, 10, 12, 15 pounds. The crew chiefs are smart enough, they keep an eye on what the cars do in practice, and they'll reset that tire pressure somewhere in the middle, knowing that there's only 40 laps left to run. One of those drivers who took right side tires is a 15 of Stephen Matthews. as J.R. Fitzpatrick picks up a spot. Now look at Mark Dilley in the nine car sliding back up on the outside. Brad Graham will take 
taking position as well. But wow, three wide here at Delaware Speedway, the Keystone Light 200. And yeah, business is picking up. Up front, a pair of very potent Mopars down the back stretch. Whoa, the 84 gets into the back of the 60. Ron Beauchamp Jr.'s Mopar. Beauchamp seems to be just trying to hang on to a very, very loose race car. That Mopar Dodge is all kinds of crossways off almost every single corner. Is now the Schick Hydro Chevy of J.R. Fitzpatrick gets a little loose going into one. Contact between the 60 and the 84, up off a of turn two. The 84 gets sideways, the 60's gonna cover the spot. And the 15 of Matthews is in there as well, and contact. Wow, the 84 and the 60 both go around in turn three. And the Mopar dodge up against the wall, he fires it back up and grabs the gear, but no doubt that driver a little hot under the collar. Obviously, caution flag is out, and that'll slow the field. Well, we'll take another look at what happened here. Down the back stretch, racing for the spot. The 84 just drives in and roots him out of the way. And then the 84 himself goes for a slide and a spin, riding on board with Beauchamp. Wow, Beauchamp contact with the outside wall of the nose, but I don't think it hurt the car that bad. And that's from J.R. Fitzpatrick's point of view, just the back end of the Chick Hydro Chevy. He keeps it going. and. Fires it back up, sees the caution lights out, and will rejoin the field, but this will shuffle the front of the pack. The 23 Tim Hortons car on pit road, they've got the hood up. Change in plans with the number 60 car, guys. They were going to stay out, but then decided to make the stop. A handling adjustment in the left rear by crew chief Mike Knott, and cleaning that windshield, Ron Beauchamp Jr. is now on the charge back up front. Back with more from Delaware in a moment. and mobile TV, now available on Bell smartphones and tablets. Welcome back to the Keystone Light 200 from Delaware Speedway. We're working lap 173. Don Thompson Jr. is your leader. The 23 of Jeff Lapsovich still in his pit stall as the Tim Hortons crew works on the right front steering arm. Of course, from that contact with the 22 of Scott Steckley much earlier in the race. Well, these cars are built tough, but when you got wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, something has to give. And the 21 of Jason White, the recipient of the VTEC free pass, he's now in 12th as J.R. Fitzpatrick is on a charge, heading up through the field. Wow, the 84, he's on a mission with 26 laps to go. He wants to get back to the front. And he needs to get back up to the front. Don Thompson Jr. and Scott Steckley are top two in points. Uh, Thompson chasing Steckley, but J.R. Fitzpatrick inside the top five. He needs to keep pace with those two. Matthews overcooked, turn one, moved the three up out of the lane, and is going to steal the spot. Mixie, if he's all, oh, he's all kinds of loose. He's trying to fill the hole as well. Jason Hathaway is going to drop down in front of the Beyond Digital Imaging 02 of Kerry Mix. So the snap on Dodge will hold on to fifth spot. Everybody still chasing, though, the Dodge Challenger, the eighth car of Don Thompson Jr. Well, the 22 and the 17 both have fresher tires than Don Thompson Jr., but Don Thompson's got a well-set-up race car. Green flag stop for Mark Dilley. Looks like a flat right front tire. A little trouble with the change, but they are making it. The 23 of Jeff Lapsovich also making another stop. They've got a steering arm bent on the right front from a problem out on track. The team changing tires and trying to move that steering arm away from the tire. It appears to be rubbing. Heartbreak for that team as you saw smoke from the 55. You were right, Billy. You called it a long time ago. As the 55 of Dexter Stacy, that power plant goes up in smoke. Wow, that puts more coolant oil down on the racetrack. Slicking over. Already a slick racetrack. We'll go on board and have a look. There's out the windshield of the NW car. You can see all the fluid all over the windshield. And there's even more now. As a big poof of smoke in the 55 of Dexter, Stacy has his good run today, squashed by an expired motor. Wow, race 
racing all over the racetrack. The top 10 right there in a the blanket. Things are awful close up front, the 8 and the 22. Everybody talks about how much of a gentleman Scott Steckley is. He can taste victory here today. He's all over the back of Don Thompson Jr. Will he move him? No, I don't think so. Very, very unusual for the 22. Whoa, contact there. There's, everybody's checking up. There's the 84. JR, he's trying to get underneath the homer 19. That is for seventh position, the 19 of Brad Graham hanging on to it, and the 84 right up underneath his back bumper. Stephen Matthews now taking a look up on the outside in the 22 of Scott Steckley, who took a peek for the lead. Well, in the darkness, you can see how much brake they're using here as them front rotors are just blowing horn. And Brad Graham got a little taste of the bumper of the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick as Fitzpatrick takes that spot away. Here comes Hathaway to the inside of the 15 of Matthews, and Matthews gets all kinds of crossways. Wow, contact all over the place. It's root and gouge night here at Delaware Speedway. And now Matthews is going to try and have to get back to in the line because he's up in that outside group. Mix is going to take a spot away. See, Mix, he backed that thing in like a sprint car. He was sideways all the way into the entrance of the corner. Matthews got lucky there, able to duck in, and the 0-2 goes around all by himself. The Nicky's forward of Kerry Mix goes around, and hard on the brakes was the 60 of Ron Beauchamp Jr. to avoid another caution here at Delaware. And this will set us up for a shootout to the finish in the Keystone Light 200. Your leader continues to be the eight of Don Thompson Jr. That grunge thing. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway, just outside of London, Ontario. The Keystone Light 200 as we're on lap 192, preparing for a shootout here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN. The 2011 Dodge Charger RT Pace Car pulls off once again. Don Thompson Jr. is your leader, and your points leader, Scott Steckley, starting alongside on the outside. Can he do anything? Going into one. On the tires, they're side by side heading for the Delaware Hill. Thompson gets a distinct advantage coming down the hill. He's got two car lengths to the 22. Yeah, and Scott Steckley finds that open hole. He's able to get to the inside. That's exactly what he wanted to see as Stephen Matthews continues to hold third spot. Six laps to go this time by. Matthews really cooking it around the bottom. He's going to open the door. The 17 for the three. Hathaway goes way to the inside. He gets collected by the 17 of DJ Kennington. Slides all the way up the racetrack. And the rock star Dodge is going to lose a number of spots. Wow, they're fighting hard for positions on the bottom of the racetrack. The three tried to hammer the door shut, and he lost the battle. And Matthews locked that left front tire going into turn number one, looking to close the gap on your leaders. And here comes Steckley. Matthews into the back of the 22. Wow, Steckley had a shot at him. He got it. The 15 and took that shot away. Don Thompson Jr. had the 22 right up on his quarter panel, and the 22 got rooted by the 15. Kennington now goes to work on the Bill Matthews motor number 15 of Stephen Matthews, but your leader continues to be the 8 of Don Thompson Jr. trying to stick that car to the inside. A lock up on the left front for the 22 of Scott Stackley. The 15 goes to the inside. Into the corner, locked up the left front tire. DJ had a look, but thought better of it. Coming to the white flag, one more lap to go here in the Keystone Light 200. Don Thompson Jr. trying to hold off the points leader, the 22 of Scott Stackley. And Kennington gets to the back of the 15 as they touch down the back straightaway. Down into turn three the last time. Kennington gives him a shot, takes the spot. And Thompson on the four will be your winner. Steckley will come home second. Kennington will nip Matthews for third spot. Fitzpatrick rounding up the top five. High fives all around. In the eight pit as Don Thompson Jr. wins his first here in 2011. Don Thompson Jr. owns the winner's circle here tonight at Delaware. He led the last 45 laps of the Keystone Light 200. Here's more with Todd. Don Thompson Jr. gets a cold drink and then climbs out of that number eight, waves the checkered flag and salutes the great crowd that came out here to Delaware Speedway. Big smile on his face and Donnie, he's gonna, he's gonna stand up and take one more encore. Come on down, Donnie. You can tell by that smile on your face how proud you are of 
this team. Only the second time this car has been run. First win for the new team. How good does that feel? Oh, it feels really good. And of course, I got to thank the uh, Hackinson family. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Farmers Feed families, Snap On Tools, Rockstar. Uh, just everybody, the crew. You know, I griped at them on, on a couple of pit stops, and now I feel bad. They uh, they do one heck of a job every week, and uh, I'm just so proud to be here. Don Thompson Jr., your winner at Delaware Speedway. And there you see Teresa, Don's longtime girlfriend, leaning in for her victory kiss as we take a look at the final results in the top 10 here at the Keystone Light 200. Matthews, of course, coming home in fourth spot, halfway all the way back to eighth. That's not indicative of the run he had here today. And now let's go down with your second place finisher. Here's Tom. Scott Steckley with another podium finish. He gave Don Thompson just about all he could handle trying to get by there in the last few laps. Yeah, our car was real good at the end, that's for sure. I just I, I just couldn't get him coming off. Um, me and Donnie raced each other real clean all the time. We, I didn't want to rough him up. It would it'd come back around. So just got to thank my crew. What an awesome job. All the fans that came out tonight to support us. Canadian Tire, all our sponsors, Herb Transport, AW Miller Rights Off. Couldn't, can't get much better than this. Great win for Scott Steckley. Well, Todd, close to a win anyway for Scott Steckley, but he continues to lead the Castro points chase, and that's probably the most important part. Don Thompson Jr., though, eats up into that lead. Well, consistency wins championships, and both those guys, Steckley and Thompson, have been on the podium at every event so far. Back-to-back -to -back top 10s for Jason White. He's 10th in the points, and Todd standing by with today's third-place finisher. First podium finish of the year for DJ Kennington. You had to work for it tonight, and you sure needed that one. Yeah, we sure did. I mean, it's not <laughs> kind of lost some ground to Scotty and Nani again, but, uh, man, we had a rough night. We went back to the front, back to the front, and Delaware is a great racetrack. I love it, but tough place to pass, but uh, Castro Edge, Mahindra, Cathcart Trucking, everybody that helps us out, Attache Power Tools, NGK. You all know who you are. My dad, another great motor there, and obviously my guys for fixing this thing, getting me back out there. I really appreciate it. Thanks, DJ. Well, the car didn't look pretty when it finished, but it sure ran well. It's almost a full moon here at Delaware Speedway as we take a look at the Dodge Mopar Fast Five. Nearly everybody in the uh, top five, Brad Graham and Jason Hathaway finishing seventh and eighth, collecting some money. That's Landon French from Canadian Tire giving Don Thompson his big trophy for his win here tonight. The Keystone Light 200 has been brought to you by Castrol. Visit us at changeyouroilchangeyourlife.com. By Tim Hortons, premium lead coffee, always 20 minutes fresh. And by Leland Industries, quality fasteners, quality service, built to win. Well, there's the boys on the podium, the veterans of the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, happy with their hardware tonight. Our next race, the Vortex Brake Patch 200 from Mosport, back on the road courses from all of us here at James Robinson Associates. We'll see you next time.